Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Emily. I'm a mom who loves home decor, thrifting, and a good DIY project. Today I'm going to be sharing a beginner's sourdough recipe that's also a no need recipe. I am 100% a beginner at making sourdough. So the reason I chose to make this recipe as a beginner is because I feel like it's very doable. It's an easier sourdough recipe to learn. Obviously it's still like an involved process and it still takes like two days to make, but it's relatively easy and simple. I thought it'd be fun to teach you guys since I'm still learning. Before we jump into things, if you're not already, feel free to follow me on Instagram at emilyface22. If you guys wanna skip right to like the recipe of how I make it, just go to this number on the screen. But if you're like definitely a beginner, you might wanna listen to me talk for the next, I don't know, minute or two. <laughs> and hopefully I could answer some questions you might have. Yeah. If this is your first time making sourdough, you're going to need something called a starter. My suggestion is to ask around for your friends, your friend's family, or even look up like local people who make sourdough and see if you can get a starter from them. You don't need a lot of somebody's starter to get started on your own. That would be my number one suggestion is just see if somebody else near you has a starter and they can give you some because it's not hard to share the love. If you can't get a starter from anybody. There are tons of YouTube videos of how to make your own. I got my starter from a friend so I have not made my own and I don't know how because again I'm a beginner. To make this you also will need a Dutch oven or something like that. I think you need a Dutch oven. I can be I don't know, but I think you do. So I borrowed my friends for a couple weeks until I got my own, but I have seen them like at Costco, at different grocery stores. I ended up buying one. I probably paid too much for it off of Amazon because I really wanted a white one. I can link the one I got down below. And then I also got like a pretty affordable little kit that came with like a bread bowl and like a scoring knife and also this little like stir thing all that stuff will be linked down below i did get it off of amazon a few things i want to mention about the bread and my bread and maybe what you'll see is that i'm not claiming that this is like the traditional sourdough this is like the recipe you make if it's your first time making sourdough you want to try it but it feels really intimidating then this is the recipe for you <laughs> I recognize that this definitely skips some steps. I think that's the point of this recipe is that it's easier. Okay, I did wanna say that the crust on this sourdough bread is a little bit softer. My friend who gave me this recipe, that is intentional. I don't know, like I actually like a softer crust. My boys won't even eat crust and especially if it's hard they for sure will not eat it. So the crust does have like a nice crust to it but it's softer than traditional sourdough crust. Um, I'm trying to think, I don't wanna forget anything. I hope that's it. I'm going to put the recipe at the end of the video. I'm gonna put it on the screen. You guys can screenshot it, good old screenshot. Without further ado, here is how I make my sourdough bread. Step one, you are going to need a scale, a bowl, starter, flour, and water. You're gonna to wanna to use filtered water too. First thing we need is 135 grams of water. I have 135 grams of water. Now I need 135 grams of flour. Oh my gosh, I got it perfect. And lastly, this is my starter. I fed my starter a few hours ago. You're gonna wanna feed your starter in the late afternoon. That way, when it's at its highest, you can use it. So I fed mine a little late actually, but it will do. And we are going to need 40 to 50 grams of starter. Now we simply stir this together. The last step for tonight is to simply cover it in saran wrap and leave it on the counter. I think you can also use a cloth, you know, whatever you want. 
You're gonna leave it on the counter overnight for about eight hours. next morning and this is my Levain. I'm actually not sure how to pronounce that word but that's what this is. Something fun to do to know if it's ready is to get some water and you can put some of it in water to see if it floats and if it floats then you know it's ready. Hey it floats. I've definitely done this and it hasn't floated and I've made my bread anyways. <laughs> <laughs> it still turned out, but I know it's supposed to float. We're going to mix four ingredients and you're gonna need a bigger bowl this time. You could even use a bigger one than this, but this is about as big as I have. Set your scale to zero. You're going to put in your Levain. I just put in all of it. It's about 270 grams, but honestly it doesn't matter. Well, I don't think it matters if it's like a little off or something just as long as it's pretty close to that. 280, so yeah, it's really close. Next, we're going to add in 585 grams of water. Then you're gonna wanna mix the water and the Levain together. Now we're going to add 900 grams of flour. grams of flour and now I'm going to add 20 grams of salt. Oh, that was 21. There we go, 20. <laughs> and now you can take one hand. You actually could have like water nearby to because your hands are going to get really messy and water will help clean it off. Basically you just kind of mix it together until there's no flowery parts. The last thing you're going to do is cover it and put it in a warmer place for around six hours to let it rise. I actually put mine next to a little heater we have, not directly in contact with the heat, but just nearby because we live in a basement suite and my bread will not rise without a little bit of extra heat. But if you have a warm house, you can definitely just leave yours on the kitchen counter for six hours. It has been about seven hours and you can see that this has definitely risen from what it was like earlier. Now what you're going to do is just take some flour just sprinkle a little flour out. Sprinkle, if you have these bread bowls, sprinkle the bread bowls with flour. If you don't have the bread bowls, you can use a regular bowl with saran wrap on the bottom. That works too. Now we dump this out. Okay, now I have this little cutter tool and I'm just going to cut this in half. Okay, if you want you can sprinkle some flour on the top of the bread. You're going to kind of put your hands like this and we're going to do this dragging motion on the table. Drag it and it kind of tucks under itself and then I kind of lift and turn. Drag it. And if it kind of sticks I just put uh, more flour on my hands. So you're gonna wanna do this until you feel like you've got a good shape, but you don't wanna do it too much that you break your dough, if that makes sense. I've done that where I do it too much and then that kind of starts to split on the top. That's if you know you've done it too much. So yeah, just until you feel like you got a good shape going. You could get some air bubbles and you can actually kind of like pop those and that's okay. Okay, I feel like that's a good shape. <laughs> so once you've got a good little shape, you can take one of your floured bowls and you flip it upside down and then you can pinch the bottom. So we're gonna do that again. Uh, 
step is to cover it with saran wrap and put it in the fridge. You can do two things. One, you can wait at least two hours. I actually don't know the exact time, but I usually wait at least two hours to then bake them. Or my friend who taught me this recipe, she always waits until the morning, so a whole other day, and then makes bread in the morning. So it's really just whatever you want. Right now it's only 2.30, so I could definitely just wait two hours, make bread this evening, and then let it cool, because you're not supposed to cut your bread when it's hot, so I could let it cool, and then just have bread already made for the morning, which is what I usually opt to do. So these are wrapped and going in the fridge. It's actually the next day for me. I ended up just deciding to wait until the morning to bake. I've preheated my oven to 500 degrees. Right before you bake is when you take your dough out of the fridge. You're going to flip it upside down onto parchment paper. I have a scoring knife. I can link where I've gotten everything below. Actually, it was a kit on Amazon. And you simply do a swift motion. And then open my lid. Now I bake for 10 minutes with the lid on and then remove the lid and bake for another 25 minutes. If you guys end up making this recipe, you have to let me know. Tag me on Instagram at emilyfaith22. Like, I wanna see if you guys use this recipe. Comment down below and let me know. Are you gonna try it? Is this your first time making sourdough? Have you made sourdough for years? You know, let me know your sourdough experiences. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. So as you guys can subscribe for more of my everyday life, follow me on Instagram at emilyfaith22. I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye. Bye.